Those that the nope the frick out of a relationship. What was your they are probably crazy red flag moment? After dating this girl for about a year, her parents surprised me with a contract stating I would propose to my GF within 3 months. I thought my GF would share my concern, but she actually thought I was being irrational for not signing. Nope the frick out of that one and later blocked that entire family from my life in every way I could. I think this one is underrated. The group effort really makes it special. My ex started a rumor at my college that I'm pregnant. Might as well just get knocked up since everyone already thinks I am. Then she stared at me expectantly. She wasn't joking. Expectantly. She pulled out a knife and started running in circles around the house with it. I was on a bus back home the next day. She just played too much counter strike. She told me a story about how she once had a stalker that would stand in her backyard and stare at her through her window at night and call her and tell her he liked her bra, the color of it, etc. It got weirder when she took me out to her backyard to show me the exact spot where he was standing. Even though she claimed to never have seen him, she told me many other wild facts. That she thought it was this guy that went to school with us but she wouldn't tell me his name. That she got letters from him claiming he was in love with her. Things like that. But none of them added up and it was so completely obviously a lie. The final nail in the 2x4 was when I got a Facebook message from her mom on Facebook trying to convince me that her daughter was telling the truth when it was obviously her that got onto her mom's Facebook and sent me the message. I completely ended contact with her after that. Not even dating but going out on a few dates and over text message goes hey I just wanted you to know that I've had many many past partners. I've probably slept with at least 30 guys. Now I don't judge and I don't care so I replied with hey that's cool. It doesn't bother me. She flips and goes off I don't give a frick what you think. I wasn't asking permission from you. Why then do you bring it up? I don't give a frick. She wanted a negative reaction. She told me I had to be okay with the fact that her and her two brothers sometimes frick and have been doing so since they were little kids. Nope. What the frick? I called her pretty. She did not like this. She got quite angry, then tweeted something to the tune of every girl deserves to be called beautiful every day. Pretty psycho. Her complete inability to leave money in a checking account. She had a frightening compulsion to spend more than we had. I kept thinking that she would settle down once we had a few items for our apartment. After 6 or 7 years I finally realized we could never dig out of the debt we had and we broke up. I took $10,000 in credit card debt to pay off the guilt I felt for leaving her and lived in a shack to save up money. Within a year or so I had paid off the bills and started watching my bank account grow and grow. It became a game for me and I still kept living like a pauper. By the time I met somebody else and proposed. I had so much money that my new wife yelled at me that it was not making interest in my checking account. She was right. But it still broke my heart to see my checking account game get reset. Oh. And we celebrated 17 years of marriage this year. She's a keeper. I love the second part of this. It is the shortest romantic comedy I have ever read. I was having fun watching the numbers go up. But then she yelled at me because my money was not making interest in a checking accountant. She was right. But now my game was over. It is both cute and funny at the same time. She bit me twice. Once on my arm and then on my butt. These were not fun. Love bites. We were in an argument and the crazy broad got violent. Took a chunk out of both places. I finally slapped her so she would release her jaw from my butt. She was shocked. She called the cops. They showed up and arrested her. I was the one bleeding after all. He yelled at me and accused me of cheating because he found another man's pubic hair on my toilet seat. It was dog hair. He still didn't believe me when I got the dog and compared its fur to the hair found on the toilet seat. I'm just picturing your dog using the toilet and then when you find the hair he thinks he's caught but then he is arguing and he knows his secret is safe. I didn't wash a bowl in the sink before work. I said I went to do it but got distracted and I didn't. He decided to teach me a lesson by speeding the car up and then slamming the brakes on and stopped before hitting the car in front of us stopped at the lights. The turned to me and said I was going to smash into them. But I didn't yeah he didn't last long after that. It was weird and looking back it didn't make sense what he said but it scared the crap out of me at the time. That's horrifying and abusive. I'm glad you left. 
ex of 3 years started suggesting the idea of having a threesome. We lost our virginity together. So I figured she just wanted to branch out and have some new experiences in a respectful and mutually beneficial way. Nope. She just wanted to test my loyalty and got pee at me for being interested in her suggestion. This is so ridiculous. I can't imagine being this disingenuous about something that's supposed to be a close intimate conversation. I dated a girl who was the second girl I had ever been with. I found out she was kind of nuts after she showed me that she liked to make her cat do backflips by physically flipping her poor cat upside down. So I stopped seeing her and I later found out she had posted stories about us on her online journal, none of which were true stories. Then I found out she was killed by an alligator in Florida because she wanted to go skinny dipping in a pond in the middle of the night. That ending though. After our third date he brought up getting married. When I told him I'm not against it, but I feel like I should date the person for a few years first he didn't understand why I'd want to wait so long. I thanked her for advice that she had given me by texting thanks for the advice and she flipped the frick out, asking me why I always have to be so sarcastic and passive aggressive. She could not believe that I legitimately thought it was thankful. Don't remember what it was anymore though. This is precisely the same red flag I just posted about, except in a somewhat different form. Same underlying issue though, people constantly discovering problems that don't actually exist. As a general rule, people who don't trust others aren't very trustworthy themselves. We were not in a relationship, thank god, but after the first date I had a weird feeling. Two red flags stood out, he was slightly irritated to learn I was in my 30s even though he was 40. As in was irritated I was not younger, I look much younger than I am. Not angry irritated but you could tell he was slightly disappointed. Then when I mentioned how I used to be incredibly gullible and naive he took quite an interest in that. Too much of an interest. So that night after I got home I googled him but couldn't find anything. Talked to my upstairs neighbor about him and showed her a picture. Lucky for me she knew who he was because he went to school with her ex-husband. Turns out I couldn't find him because he gave me a fake last name. Looked him up using the correct name and what I found made me sick to my stomach. Not only was he almost 10 years older than what he told me but he also had one conviction and two arrests for gross sexual imposition of a minor. Read the documents and their physical description matched mine to a T. Hair type, body type, act. Noped out of that situation really freaking quick and told him never to contact me again. To his credit he never did. That's really messed up. It's really good that you found out so early. It makes me sick to think that people like him are out there when they're a woman who are actually gullible. Always do your research. He thought the dog was in the crate and proceeded to throw the crate towards the sliding glass doors while screaming about me letting a pan soak in the sink after dinner. Dog was sitting next to me on the couch under a blanket. Packed our crap up and never looked back. All I can think of now is that you and the dog both packed your stuff up. Like the dog put all the toys in the crate and was ready to walk out with two tennis balls in his her mouth while you got your suitcase. We went to an amusement park and she demanded we rode the same ride four times in a row and would throw a fit any time I suggested anything else. The line for that ride was over two hours each time and we basically waited in lines for the whole day. The line for that ride was over two hours each time. That's a complete disaster. It would have to be a bloody great ride to be worth waiting two hours for even once. If it's getting to that point, they probably want to operate a ticket system. Mind you, if this was Disneyland, they'd probably use that convenience as an excuse to screw you out of even more money. He wouldn't let me eat more food than him. In the end of our relationship he would measure my food every time I tried to eat. I hadn't been eating for two days because I was scared to make him angry and tried to make a meal and took one deciliter. Deciliter. More than I was allowed and he flipped the frick out. He was crazy as frick but thought I was the crazy one. Told me she couldn't have a baby because something was wrong with her. I thought oh well that sucks but whatever. Constantly asking me about baby related stuff and how she really wants a baby even though she told me she can't. Started to wonder what was up at this point. Went on holiday for a month. Came back and was still seeing dating her and talking constantly but she had blocked me on Facebook. Getting massive red flags at this point. Started acting altogether really weird. Asked her what was going on and that I just wanted her to be honest. 
Turned out she was pregnant and is now a single mother. Think I dodged a bullet. More like you dodged a cannonball. She blocked you on FB so she could lay the groundwork for your introduction as the father of that child. My ex said if I was locking the bathroom door, I was probably hiding something from him. And a couple of times he pretended to break up with me to say my reaction. When I cried he laughed off me and said he was glad I cared about him. What a mature 30 year old man I'm glad he is not a part of my life anymore. Of course you are hiding something. Bodily functions. Which are 100% normal to hide. Man. I was such a dumb bass. So many warning signs. She used to disappear and not come home at night. Not answer her phone. Etc. Then. She got pregnant and broke the news by telling me that she flushed her birth control. I respect a woman's right to choose. So now I have a lovely 12 year old daughter. I still didn't leave. When my daughter was born, she started doing the same thing again, drinking screaming, etc. I broke up with her and we started sharing our daughter 1 stroke 2 and 1 stroke 2. A bit later I transferred to university and stupidly decided to give it one more shot. After living at uni with her and our daughter, I found out all of her trips back home were to have an affair. I was like what the frick, I am in college, work 2 jobs, take care of the baby, you know. So I noped out, I have had full time custody of my daughter for 10 years, and her craziness gave me the best gift I have ever received. We dated for a few weeks and then the night came to get down. Since having sex doesn't happen often for me, I don't typically keep a condom in my wallet or on my person. She says she wants to frick and I tell her I don't have a condom, to which she replies it's fine. Being the frisky nun thinker I was I got to work. As I'm ready to see him I start pulling out. She grabs my hips and pulls me back inside her and says in me and of course, that being the hottest thing I've ever heard a woman say to me, I finish inside her. A few weeks go by and she tells me she's late and to be prepared to be a father. Not the most ideal situation but I put myself in it. I'm going to see it through. Another two days go by and she's in tears. I ask what the matter was and she said she got her period. I looked confused and she yelled. I wanted to have a child with you and it didn't work and now we have to try again. I've never ghosted someone so fast in my life. Goddamn did you get lucky. When she legitimately got jealous of my cat. She was angry every day because I'd give the cat a big hey kitty when I saw him. As opposed to the traditional human greeting she'd get. Took it as a sign that I liked the cat more than her and she later turned it into a me or the cat ultimatum. He's still an awesome cat. Asked me what we'd name our kids and how many we should have on our second date. Also, she was very manipulative and later I found out she already had two other boyfriends. Years ago there was a guy I was sorta seeing. We were making out and he pulled away and told me. I want nine kids. He then leaned back in to continue kissing me. He wasn't joking and we weren't even referring to ourselves as dating so it was really weird. My second comment on this thread. Met a guy at a club. We kissed and I gave him my number. Started feeling bad as the night progressed so went home. Ended up really sick with gastro. The one where you finally get to sleep only to wake up. Vomit, wish for death then pass out again. It was a 24 hour bug in total. In that time he had left 30 missed calls and messages on my phone. I did not arrange a date with him. Or call him back. I had the only met him the night before. Literally minutes after asking me out he admitted that after he tried to sell an ounce of weed to some guys. They tried to rob him. He caught up to one and kidnapped him. He beat him, threw him in the trunk. Drove him 10 miles out of the city. Beat him again, stole his jacket and shoes, smashed his phone, and left him there, in the middle of winter. So yeah, didn't last. He went through the messages on my phone twice. Each time was after a fight because he knew I would have ranted to my friend about it. Then he tried starting a fight about what he read. Got harassed by him for 3 months after I ended it. Only stopped when I had to get a police officer to go tell him he's not to be anywhere near me anymore or contact me. Found out his first girlfriend got a restraining order against him for the same reasons. Especially frightening when you take into account we were only 17. How dense do you have to be to not only get a restraining order once, but twice as 17 years old? All my watts. I had a girl request that we have sex outside, in the woods. 
We met online, naturally, anyway, we head out to a nice spot and do the deed. She begins sobbing after. I ask her if everything is alright, and she reassures me that it is. Then proceeds to tell me about how she was raped in the woods a couple years back while continuing to sob. Her saying don't have sex with me, trust me, and then saying stick it in, stick it in, while we were fooling around. She ended up threatening to commit suicide when I broke up with her. It was freaking rough. Nope nope nope. Don't have sex with me, trust me. See at that point I'd be tripping about STDs or something. I was admitted to hospital after nearly having a heart attack. He texted me, asked what I was up to. I told him I was in emergency care, that I had almost died, and I was extremely upset. It was 2am. He replied cool. At least he didn't go dang. LOL. Not technically a relationship, but first date. Dude spends the entire time talking about getting locked in a Polish hospital's psych after flying to Warsaw to visit his internet girlfriend. He then proceeded to tell me how much I look like her and how she changed her phone number, all social media accounts, and blocked him on everything, and how she was a crazy bee for making him go to the hospital. Dude then abruptly changes topic and calls his friend living in residence to ask if he could borrow his room. I politely excused myself during that phone call, and hailed a cab outside. When he started yelling at me and mocking me when I was having a panic attack, I had run downstairs to find a safe spot to calm down after the onset of the panic attack annoyed him. He followed me merely to upset me further, all the while I could barely breathe and was crying uncontrollably. Went and saw a movie with him and Jack the Giant Slayer, and he insisted that he hold my hand the entire freaking time. I pulled my hand away for a minute because it was making me freaking uncomfortable, and he immediately snatched it again and held it like it was the golden freaking snitch during the final Quidditch match of the season. Got some very rappy vibes from him after that. Our unexpected Hogwarts. She was the biggest case I've been there, done that that I've seen so far. Retired military of 12 years, deployed multiple times to all the popular places. A full-time nurse, part-time EMT, full-time college student master's degree for nursing. Mother, went to college for super cool computer hacky stuff only possible in movies. Currently in litigation, owns her own business, photography, and has at least two workers, but she'll still do shoots herself. Has a social life. Only a couple of those can be have been easily explained. Such as she has shared custody of her daughter, or that college classes aren't running right now. But some of those just weren't adding up in my mind, and all evidence started pointing to run bro real quick. One example is she showed me her business's Facebook page and started saying how this number is 2 million views, and that 34 is 34 million views. Yet it was plain as day just 3400. On top of that but she has an event set up with only one person attending. My first thought was how is one person attending with 34 million page views better yet? How does she only have two workers with those numbers? Or how is there that many page views in a town of only 70k? Per 2016 census? This is just one example, and I seriously doubt she was talking herself up in an attempt to impress me. I'm sorry but the as per census but made me laugh so hard. The thought of you checking the data and then saying I'm not the crazy one is too funny in my head. He had kinda been a jerk the whole relationship. Couldn't take the blame for anything. Tried convincing me that my parents didn't love me. Told me who I couldn't hang out with. Told what I could and couldn't wear. And I would only go to his house because he felt discriminated against in my house due to the fact my parents hated him. In retrospect, for very good reason. Then. On our 7 month anniversary, he proposed to me, in his dirty car, in a mall parking lot on the bad side of town. My reaction was kind of like my life flashing before my eyes before death, except it was my future. I saw snippets of a crappy, sad, abusive future with him. So I flat out said no, took the ring from his hands, shoved it in his center console, and told him to take me home. He was livid, that's when crap got scary, and fast. Instead of driving me back home, he drove to the neighborhood nearest mine and started driving through the cul-de-sacs at 45 miles per hour, punching his steering wheel, and spewing obscenities at me. I told him over and over again, take me home, 
damn it. But he wouldn't. It was mortifying. Finally, after an hour of sheer terror, he parked at the empty lot at the end of my street and asked me what was going to happen. For the last time, I told him he was going to take me the frick home. So he roared up my street crying and yelling, and as soon as I bust his car door open, he tried to pull me back in. He was much larger and stronger than itty bitty me, and he was using all his strength to force me back inside and I was using all of mine to get away. I knew that if I got back inside that car, I would never get back out alive. All the way to my garage he was following me, crying, forcing his arms around me to pull me back into his car. I don't know how, but by the grace of higher powers, I was able to pry away from him, open my garage, and close it with him on the other side, punching the door as it went down. A month later I noped the frick to the other side of the country. I blocked him and his crappy family on every social media site and blocked their numbers. 2. He had told me he would kill me if I ever tried to leave him, and that night easily could have been it. I'm really glad you got out of that. I hope things are better for you now. He kept hanging out at the Scientology church joint in town, but wouldn't tell me if he was a Scientologist or not. He said he was trying to get them to see things his way, which if I recall, was even weirder and creepier than the Scientologists. I still see him around quite a bit, working in a bar in a small town sucks sometimes. I met her in a bar, she was cool, always had great conversations, and she could hang. She had some major psychiatric issues that she didn't mention until a few months in, but I could see the red flags. She was on antidepressants for a few attempted suicides, so one day we're hanging out in her bedroom at her parents' house. She gets frustrated while studying and starts beating the crap out of the wall. Honestly she ripped a section off the wall a 2x4 feet poster could barely hide. I stuck it out for another year until she had lost it on me about how selfish I am that we hang out with her family all day, but I won't stay for a 10pm dinner. She dug her nails into my forearm, enough to bleed. I got out of her car and walked home, left her stuff for her stepdad to pick up, and never saw her again. I had a GF who kept trying to make deals with me to finish inside her, like she would make me dinner and let me sleep in if I finished inside her with no condom. When I kept refusing, saying we were not ready, she started poking holes in the condoms. That's when I knew I was done. Not really a relationship, but a first date. I was 19 and a junior in college at the time. One of my TAs asked me out. I believe he was 3 years older than I. He picked me up at my apartment and I let him in while I finished getting ready. He started telling me how he could teach me so much about the world and life in general and how I had so much to learn. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, he was saying I was his inferior but he'd be happy to teach me until I was more at his level. It was really a WTF moment. Why someone would think the way to a girl's heart was to disparage her intelligence and tell her how superior you were. I showed him to the door and locked it behind him. I was seriously waiting for him to frick with my final grade, but he didn't. Which is good because I would have rained some crap down on his stupid head. It's funny how some people don't even realize the implicit messages they are unconsciously sending, even when they really have good intentions. That's how rooted inside can their arrogance be. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.